Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the Sierra Nevada Corporation challenges NASA commercial crew contract, the first A-29 Super Tucano arrives at Moody Air Force Base, and an American company works with the Russians to produce a firefighting jet. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Sierra Nevada Corporation has filed a legal challenge to the award of the contracts to Boeing and SpaceX under the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability, referred to as the CCT CAP program. The CCT CAP program will restore U.S. transportation capability to the International Space Station. SNC claims that while all three competitors were found to be compliant and awardable under the criteria set forth in the request for proposal, the selecting of only two proposals would result in a substantial increased cost to the public. They say that NASA's own source selection statement and debrief indicate that there are serious questions and inconsistencies in the source selection process. SNC's filing seeks a further detailed review and evaluation of the submitted proposals and capabilities. SNC's claims that their Dream Chaser design provides a wider range of capabilities and value through its design as a piloted, reusable, lifting body spacecraft. It was also the only vehicle remaining in the commercial crew program that was not a capsule system using a recovery parachute upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. The first of 20 A-29 Super Tucano aircraft to be produced in Jacksonville, Florida, arrived at Georgia's Moody Air Force Base on September 26, in preparation for the Afghanistan Pilot and Maintenance Training Mission. The A-29 is a light air support training aircraft that will be used to train 30 Afghan pilots and 90 Afghan maintainers as part of a requirement from the International Security Assistance Force to conduct training outside of Afghanistan. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Hogan, Afghan A-29 Light Air Support Training Unit Commander, said in part, quote, The mission that we are going to replace is the MI-35 helicopter, which is an attack helicopter, so they cover some of the same missions. It will allow us to do some overlap of those missions and will do it a lot better. It will also expand some other missions which they currently cannot execute, end quote. Following the training, all 20 aircraft will be provided to the Afghan Air Force. After these messages, we learn that Americans and Russians can work together, at least when it comes to firefighting. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. USA Firefighting Air Corps has announced that Russia has signed a collaboration agreement with an American company to develop a U.S.-built Beriev B-200 multi-purpose amphibious aerial firefighting jet, and that the collaboration will be headquartered in Colorado. According to USA FAC, the parties to the agreement are the Beriev Aircraft Company and International Emergency Services Incorporated, a California company. USA FAC co-founder Chris Olson made the announcement before the Colorado Wildfire Matters Review Committee and it said that USA FAC has joined the collaboration and was in discussions with international financiers to back the initiative's $500 million proposition. It's reported that the Beriev B-200 is the world's first jet designed from the ground up to function as a large air tanker. The water scooping jet can also be used for search and rescue, environmental monitoring, medical evaluation, and firefighting and cargo transportation operations. 
With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. To really enjoy the fun of flying, you need an aircraft that only goes 40 miles per hour and requires you to double tie your shoelaces. Let's take a ride in a powered parachute. Search Seated on the Edge of Forever on Aero TV's news channel. A flight instructor with the Instrom Flying Club in Oxfordshire, UK, has embarked on an ambitious project to mark the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. The club hopes to build a dozen 90% scale Supermarine Mark 26B Spitfires by the anniversary date. It's reported that Paul Fowler, one of the flying club's instructors, is leading the project. The first airplane is reported to be complete and may fly for the first time very soon. 20 volunteers have helped build the first replica Spitfire. Each will cost about $340,000 to build, according to the report. The club is soliciting donations and sponsors in an effort to complete the squadron of 12 planes. The total cost of the project is estimated at just over $6 million. After the break, we'll find out why Cessna is being sued for an accident that occurred in 1981. Stay tuned. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. The survivor of an accident involving a Cessna airplane is suing the Textron subsidiary after the insurance company that had agreed to pay him over $6 million from an annuity went out of business. The passenger in the airplane was Eric Jurgs. It's reported he was aboard a Cessna aircraft that went down near the Grand Canyon in 1981. Jurgs was awarded a cash payment of $125,000 and he agreed to accept payments totaling over $6 million from an annuity over the remainder of his life. However, the insurance company holding the annuity ceased business in August of 2013, leaving unmade payments equaling $2.7 million. Yerkes is suing Cessna, saying it and several other insurers are on the hook for the unpaid balance of the settlement. The report indicates that Cessna has not commented on the pending lawsuit nor as Lloyd's of London, which purchased the annuity from the original insurance company. A second crew member may now be carried during phase one flight testing of an experimental amateur built aircraft. Tom Patton reports. The long awaited advisory circular 90-116, the additional pilot program or APP for phase one flight testing, is the result of years of data suggesting that most accidents in the EAB fleet occurred during an aircraft's first eight hours of operation and that the majority of those accidents were related to pilot loss of control and were preventable. The document outlines which types of aircraft are allowed to participate in the program and the approval process for selecting the additional crew member. This caveat, the advisory circular is complex and must be read carefully before adding an additional crew member during phase one flight testing. The APP is completely voluntary and builders can still make the first flights of their aircraft alone if they so choose. The program is currently available to builders of most EAB kits with manufacturer recommended engine installations. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Well, that's our program for October 1st. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And remember, there are some huge upgrades and changes coming soon to Airborne, starting with a daily schedule Monday through Friday early next year. And Jim Campbell will be talking a little more about this on Friday. Stay tuned. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching. <laughs>